Are, are, you, uh, are you satisfied with how the House Intelligence Committee Chairman Adam Schiff conducted this hearing today? Absolutely. I think Chairman Schiff did a phenomenal job, especially considering how contentious parts of the hearing were, were between parties. There was a lot of different ways that this could have gone off the rails, and I think he did an excellent job keeping these hearings fair, but focused and really centered on the facts and the witnesses that were testifying today. House Republicans, as you know, they're clearly unanimously standing by the president, at least so far. Will it hurt Democrats if you can't successfully persuade any Republicans uh, that, uh, that uh, this all rises to impeachable conduct? I, I'm actually not overly concerned about this because I think the whole point of our public hearings is to present these facts to the public and to let the general public really see the facts for themselves and to understand why we have chosen to move forward with, in, with the impeachment inquiry. I think what we heard today was just astounding and devastating um, news for the president, for anyone that was in the administration that was really uh, partaking. And frankly, this is devastating for the country. Our national security has been compromised. Our elections are potentially compromised. And so I think right now what Republicans have to do is decide what their role is going to be in the scope of history, um, because we will look back at this time and really, truly examine the moral decisions that, that each member of Congress has decided to make. So what jumped out at you, Congresswoman, about the most devastating new information that emerged? Well, you know, it's been discussed, but this call with Ambassador Sondland and President Trump, it's a personal call that, that, um, that our witnesses testified in aid is overhearing, where Trump was personally invested in these investigations. I think it has added a layer of proximity. You know, one of the ways that the president could have potentially tried to get out of this situation is saying, you know, put um, several degrees of separation between him and some of this illicit activity. But what we heard today was that he himself was making and partaking in some of these phone calls, um, not just Giuliani, not just anyone else in administration, but him. And that really adds a, a, a much more disturbing degree of the involvement that he had in using the powers of government to create politically motivated investigations. At that news conference uh, with the Turkish president, the president said he doesn't remember any such call, poo-pooing the whole thing. What do you say to the president? Well, you know, I... If he doesn't remember making a call like that, I would, you know, I, I would be quite concerned, but I, that doesn't mean that it didn't happen. Um, I think a lot of what the president's reactions tend to be deflecting, but I think it is quite telling that he is not being defensive about this. Um, this is an extraordinarily serious allegation that is being made by a person who works in his administration. And so if he were to defend about uh, defend this, he should do so quite forcefully. Um, the allegation that's coming from someone within his own administration is extraordinarily serious. That's not something that you remember or not remembering whether you did or didn't do. A lot of the initial messaging in all of this uh, uproar uh, involved the words quid pro quo. Do, do Democrats, Congresswomen, need to fine tune their language on mm -hmm. all of this? How do you think Democrats should be making their case to the American people? Well, I'd like to remind everyone that one of the initial folks who brought this conversation of quid pro quo into this conversation was the president. It was when these allegations first came out about Ukraine, he started tweeting and frankly raising the bar saying no quid pro quo, no quid pro quo. It wasn't Democrats that were even trying to set that bar um, because you don't even need quid pro quo. But he met it. Aside from that, all of this aside, what we're centrally focused on is really him using the power of the United States government to engage in extortion of a foreign government in order to intervene in our elections. And so I think that that's our message, um, the fact that he undermined national security, that he, that, that he is trying to undermine our uh, elections, that he is engaged in flagrant abuse of power, it should be a concern to all, of Mer all Americans who believe in rule of law in the United States of America. You've supported impeachment uh, since before you were elected to Congress, uh, and you made the case that the president could be impeached for profiting off the presidency, for his conduct in the Russia investigation. What message, Congresswoman, will it send if Democrats don't incorporate, for example, those issues into mm -hmm. the upcoming articles of impeachment? 
Well, I think many of those considerations will be taken up by the Judiciary Committee when all of um, this evidence is brought forth. So we'll see. I personally do believe that the president has engaged in flagrant violations of the Emoluments Clause. I'm concerned that we would allow this corruption to continue. But at the end of the day, we have to be able to come together as a caucus. And if it is this Ukrainian allegation that is what brings the caucus together, um, then I think we have to run with however we unify the House. And so while I believe personally that we should be pursuing an invest and investigating quite fragrant, fragrant, flagrant abuses of the Emoluments Clause, um, even reporting as recently as, as, may, as the suspicious stops at Trump properties, even in um, congressional delegations or rather in um, foreign trips. I think that all of this is, is game for investigation, but we also need to move quite quickly because we're talking about the potential compromise of the 2020 elections. And so this is not just about something that has occurred. This is about preventing a potentially disastrous outcome from occurring next year. Congresswoman uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, uh, thanks so much for joining us. 